Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. If you're new here, welcome to our channel. It's 2007 Pontiac Grand Prix here and I got towed in on a flatbed and the guy says he's driving down the road, lost the steering. <laughs> That's pretty easy, sounds like you need a water pump. Only makes sense, right? Let's have a look. There's your problem. The belt fell off. Well, we all know belts just don't fall off driving down the road. Something happened. I'll show you what we found. So this here's the water pump. Got a little bit of play in it. I'm sure it didn't just start making noise today. But whatever the case may be, we'll get it fixed, get it off there. I think these are a pretty easy job. But yeah, anytime you lose a belt, you better be checking, uh, you know, idler pulleys, alternator, AC, you know, power steering, water pump. Very rarely have I ever seen one just fly off for no reason. Can't get this wiring harness out of the way. A little better, a little better view. It's kind of a Kind of a tricky one to shoot here, but I'll do my best. Get this pulley off here. Got this new uh, new air ratchet here. It's kind of the, the bigger version of the small one I've got. Mix them there. Let's see, where is it? Oh yeah, there we go. Let's see, uh, oops, there's the model number. This thing is mean. It's an impacting or reactionless ratchet. I think they advertise them at like 100 foot pounds or something. It's, uh, it's pretty insane. Give you a little closer look at that hub. Quite loose, and the water's just running right out the bottom of it. Tell you what, why don't we just peel this coil bracket right out of the way so we can have a little better look at stuff here? I think this comes right off, to be honest with you. One bolt and a ground wire. I guess I called it a bolt, but it's a nut. There we go, right here on the bottom. There we go. I think I'll slide it off, leave the plug wires and everything hooked right to it. Let's kind of stuff her to the side. Give us a little better view of uh, the water pump here. like a piece of cake really just essentially just got it unbolted at this point um, I may have spoke too soon it looks like I can't believe that GM it looks like looks like them suckers stuck one bolt behind that water pump pulley or behind that power steering pump pulley that's gotta be some of the stupidest engineering I've ever seen Well, I thought it looked easy. <laughs> gotta take and pull this uh, coolant reservoir because evidently we've got to take the power steering pump off to change a simple water pump. They put one bolt, it's like barely behind this pulley. I'm just gonna make signs that say think. Just hang them up everywhere. 
<laughs> it's like nobody thought of that. Anyhow, of course, got got to do this job on top of uh, all of our regularly scheduled work because this one got towed in. This person broke down, so we got to get this baby going. Well, it looks like it's just a couple bolts. The, uh, they were smart enough to put a couple holes through the pulley, so we ain't got to pull the pulley off, hopefully. If I'm seeing all the bolts, it's kind of a little bit tight back here. There's one. Fish out of there with a magnet. Stay on a job, don't mind me, people. I've got a really nice flexible magnet, but I broke it. Doing some exhaust manifold and bolts the other day, and you know, got a little too close with the welder. I feel like there's one more down in the bottom. bolts. Set that right out the way. So we have to take that off just to get to this one bolt on the uh, water pump. Of course you probably can't see it, can you? Not at all major anyway. Well, I'll take my word for it. That seemed to be a lot of pissing and moaning for two bolts, but socket here. So I used a 13 to take you know, these main ones out that go all the way from the water pump and through the timing cover and I grabbed a 10 to do these shorter ones but it was it was loose, very loose. It was a brand new 10 millimeter socket too so I know it's not the socket. So I ended up using a 3.8. Small ones. Make sure you got a bucket under there. This thing is mean. Probably a little aggressive for a job like this. <laughs> She'll go or blow, right? We got, it feels like got another one that way down under there. Four little bolts. Just make sure they're the same size as you're taking them out because you don't want to mix them up if they're, they're different. Oh, no, she's peeing. All right, yep, they're all the same. Yeah, so that's 10 bolts in total. Let's see if we can come in here with a bar and give this a little, a little tunk. Yeah, let's see, I thought there was probably a dowel pin. Oh man, what a sludge pit. Look at this thing. How old do you think that coolant is? Jeez. This car's got a bazillion miles on it too. It's over, over 200,000 miles on this thing. So that's a pretty fair amount of miles. Probably original coolant. What a mess. Just from the overall looks of it, I think it's probably struggling a little bit in the maintenance department. I think it's time to give this old baby the old flusheroo. We gotta get some of this crap out of here. This thing is looking nasty. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> so here's the cap. 
Uh, anyone? Anyone? What is this crap? Look at this. This is like clay. Why is it that everybody that breaks down has crap like this? This is like straight mud. Okay. The radiator. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me zoom in. This is impressive. Yeah, that's solid, folks. It can hold a screwdriver. I'm not sure what it is. I'm pretty sure it's not coolant. Let's see, let me. Yeah, I think a water pump it kind of leads to their worries. <laughs> this is unreal. I've ever got a screwdriver. I've seen some cruddy crap in radiators before. This is, uh, takes the cake. I don't even know, like I say, it's all, uh, it is, it's literally like, like clay. Wow. I bet the uh, fins in the uh, radiator are probably, you know, they're probably none of this stuff plugged up in the heater core or anything. This is completely solid all the way down to the bottom of the radiator neck. Yep, as far as I can see, this whole radiator is full. All the way to the top. I know you guys can't see it, probably. This is unreal. What do you do, you know? Well, I'll tell you what. We gotta get them back on the road. I'm sure they don't wanna buy a, uh, you know, radiator, heater cord, such. <laughs> This is stupid. Imagine how much this crap is in the engine block. It must be, uh, I don't know if this is like stop leak or, or what it is, but it's full. It's full as far as far as I can see. It's full. You can't even see the training cooler. Awesome. I'm not really sure what it is. I'll leave it a mess, but I do know this. I know what it's not, and it's not over maintained. Um, I think they probably exceeded the Dexacool recommendation of uh, intervals for replacement. And I'm pretty certain that uh, this pump didn't start making noise yesterday or the day before. Can't even turn it hardly. So we'll just keep on and try to blast some of this crap out of here, but you know. I mean, you know darn well the bottom of this block is like probably solid with this crap. But we'll try to flush a little bit out, but I don't even know what you would do. I mean, you would spend hours, days trying to get this out, even if you could get it out. I don't even know where you would begin. Um, this stuff is, is solid. I mean, this is like solid boogery stuff. <laughs> it's like mud. So you know the block's full. I don't know. I'm not gonna waste a whole bunch of time. We're gonna try to blast some of it out of there, leave it better than we found it, and uh, put a pump on it, ship it down the road. Uh, Cause there's really nothing feasibly that you could do. I mean, I cannot honestly spend, you know, eight or 10 hours washing and trying to get this stuff agitated loose in, in the block or in the radiator for that matter. But we'll try to push most of it out and make the pump last a little bit, but it is what it is. So I better move some stuff. We're about to make a mess. What a mess we have, I guess. So I've got this, uh, that's what I use for flushing heater cores. Hook an air hose to it, hook a garden hose to it, turn it on. I think it's our best chance to you know, agitate this thing. Get some of this crap broke loose. Blast it out because we got the water pump off. Catch it in the bucket and that's it. Oh, so it begins.
Drink. show stream flushing ah oh, man watch out
Oh man, this is so extreme. Looks like the camera took a hit. That's okay. We're shining her up. Ain't gonna be her first time. Probably won't be the last. I'll tell you, I don't ever talk much about my camera. But these uh these little crapper Sony handycams, dude, this thing has been dropped, smashed, bashed, burnt. And it keeps on going. There. Well, you guys can see now. Huh? How long before lunch? I don't know. I'm hungry. Uh, We're doing extreme do flushing. Think? Extreme flushing. Look at me. How long until you're ready? I'm ready anytime I got a huge mess to clean up. Huge. Ah, well, oh, it's dark in here. The people like can't even see it. Is that better? No. No, no. I can't see anything. Ah. Uh. <laughs> there you go. There we are. There you are. Show the people your new tail light. Huh? Yeah. She's like, you never buy me anything. Yeah, look at that. Got a brand new tail light for her uh, minivan. Yeah, because uh, you have a problem looking in the rear view mirror, looking at the backup camera that's showing you what's behind you, lit up. It's not true. She put the barbecue grill in the driveway. Because right back it's in. junk, and I put it there a month ago. You well, need to take it to your scrap pile. That's it, we're done. Still okay. your fault. Goodbye. All right, well, I tell you what. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. It's about, you know, nine million times better than it was. Well, eight million times better. But I got a huge mess. I gotta, I gotta squeegee some of this crap out of here and, and uh, get some things picked up. I'm gonna go eat some lunch, come back, and we'll finish this job. I don't know. I think we're doing the best we can. In here eating my wonderful lunch that Vanessa made. And another car is getting dragged in. Guess it's gonna be a long day. Alright, lunch is over. We're back out here at the honey egg. Before somebody asks, that's the OTC number on the Peter Core flushing tool, radiator flusher. Squirt gun that I have. I've had that thing for a long time. I have no idea if they still make it or not, but I just figured that would save a lot of questions. Uh, I think we're a lot further ahead uh, than we were. Um, no, it's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. Uh, looking down inside this radiator now, you'll see there's like this, you know, orange, brownish, stuff's like concrete. It's just, it's literally caked right to the side of the uh, of the plastic tub and the radiator. And you know darn well, I mean, the inside of the block looks the same, the inside of the heater core looks the same. I don't know if there's a, a chemical flush this person could do, but I mean, the, the expense and the time that would be involved in something like this, it must be astronomical, uh, you know, to get this out of everything. It's inside of everything. And I don't know, I don't know, but all I know is it's better and work is stacking up and we just got to kind of keep moving forward. So I'll show you in the radiator. So this is what we ended up. Like I say, that stuff is like, uh, it's like concrete. You can see where I was reaching down in there with my screwdriver and scraping it around. You can see the top of the uh, transmission cooler there. That's that little gray. And all right down inside the radiator, those two little humps. It's the top of the cooler. Um, I think anything's probably better than than solid, but you can see. I mean, the stuff you can kind of you can kind of work it off, but even at that, you know, I mean, it's still still really stuck on. You almost have to you almost have to kind of get in there and scrape it. I mean, you'd have to use some kind of chemical to break it loose. But maybe the best thing is that it's you know, if the heater works and the cooling system cools. I mean, the best thing to do is just leave it. 
I know that's what we're gonna do. Let's make sure this is all drying off here. This uh, OEM gasket was a metal was a metal gasket. I think our aftermarket one is probably just a paper gasket, so it's kind of nice. It doesn't make for for much cleaning. Metal gaskets come off really well without leaving any residue behind. Yeah, I think we're in good shape. So I've got a couple dowel pins down there. We're gonna I took and sprayed my gasket down with some spray tack. I'll go ahead and just get it uh, stuck on these dowel pins. Kind of line us up there, no problem. Spray tack will hold our gasket in place for us. We'll grab our new pump, which is a lot quieter than the than the old one. That never made any noise. Let's see if we can get this thing lined up here. There we go. Oops. Probably should have some bolts right handy, I guess. Let's see, get that stuck back up there. Stick one of these short bolts in there. Yeah, being that I fidgeted with that just a little bit, I just want to take a quick peek under it with a mirror, make sure I didn't uh, bump the gasket or anything of that nature. A whole lot easier to find out right now than it is uh, 20 minutes from now. All right, everything looks good. On the long bolts that you put in, put a little uh, put a little thread sealing on those. I'm just sticking these in here, and I almost forgot to tell you. Let's see the ones we took out had thread sealant on them, so they must uh, go into a water jacket. The rest of our small bolts on here, and we'll get this baby snugged up. Go ahead and tighten these big ones up. It's supposed to be uh, 25 foot pounds on these. And I think like 18 on the smaller ones or something like that. We'll go, we'll double check. it says. That's a pretty dang small bolt, I'll tell you that much. That kind of scares me. 13 feels too high. I don't know, I don't like it. Well, evidently we can achieve it. We just hit it on the bottom one. I don't know, that's 15.8. I'm gonna leave it at that. 16. 16. Yeah, I guess we're good. 
Oh man, that's, that's a lot of torque on that little tiny bowl. Guess we're good. So I'm gonna zip around here with the mirror again, make sure everything looks good. Make sure it didn't push out the gasket or anything like that. Well, looks uh, looks pretty good to me. Well, the whole rest of this job is going to be lame compared to the extreme flushing. Get this power steering pump put back on here. If we can. I don't want you guys to be able to see, but it's basically going to put the top bolt in, reach through there with the socket. I can't see a thing down there. See if we can. Uh, what's the stupidest place for a power steering pump? You ought to try checking these things when they come in for a service and everything's smoldering hot. These are the Buick Sabres and it's like all the technology we have in engineering nowadays. We can't put a remote reservoir on a pump on a General Motors. Both of those started. I'm just going to go ahead and snug these up. We'll throw the water pump pulley on it and uh, get our belt back on it here and get this thing uh, filled up. What a day! What a day! Let's see, a bunch of holes here. Which one's got threads in it? That one doesn't. Yeah, that one does. Try to line this one up. That one there. Oh yeah, first try. I think it's time. It's break clean. Now oh, we're gonna get all the old residual crap off these pulleys. We got a new belt for it. And we don't want to. Oh, we don't want to get any of that, uh, you know, antifreeze and dirt and junk all over our new belt. So we'll hose this off. And blast her off with a blow nozzle. We'll be done. Slip this belt on here. A little snugger on there. Get up around the AC. And I think this comes around the tension here, if I remember right. Pretty good to me. I grab a wrench, did I? Oh, it's in my pocket. Sweet. I'll throw a 15 wrench on here. There we go. I think we got it. Yep, 
Yeah, it looks good for my house. So I had to clean this little junker off too. I mean, I did the best I could. But like I say, this stuff is so hard on there. It's crazy. It's cray cray. But like I say, I think we're uh, way further ahead than we were when he first came in, I'll tell you that. I just still can't believe this thing was not making any noise. I've asked him multiple times. Did it, did it make no noise? Oh no, nothing. module back up on here. Get your wire harness. So pinch that. I'm leaking. Got a boo-boo. Ah, great. Price this job just went up. Oh, man. A big one. Uh, at any rate, let's fill it up with coolant. Flush this toilet. You guys really like your tools, so we're gonna avoid any airlock problems with this thing and we're gonna draw a little vacuum in the uh, radiator. We're gonna hold that vacuum and then we're gonna hook up a hose to our vacuum and, and draw the coolant right into the system. And what that'll do, that'll prevent any, uh, any air pockets from, from forming in there. Take a bite here. So we'll watch the gauge go up. So see like the coolant hoses and stuff that's getting stuck right. You know, suck right flat as it pulls the vacuum. Once it's uh, pulled as much vacuum as it can, which in this case is about, oh, 22 inches, you can uh, close the valve off on it, shut it off. I'm going to swap the, uh, all the vacuum adapter there for the hose. I'm just going to stick the hose down in our coolant. Turn it on and away she goes. Like I say, this will alleviate any air capture problems. Seems to work pretty good. I don't use this system a lot. I usually use it on troublesome vehicles that are prone to, uh, you know, locking, you know, getting trapped in air in the system. You just got to kind of got to watch because it'll it'll draw your fluid down pretty quick. Um, these 3.8s actually have a bleed screw over on top of the thermostat housing. And they typically don't have issues, but very well if we can eliminate 
touching anything that's in the coolant and it might be crusty and corroded and then we will and plus I know you guys like to see uh, <laughs> all these new tools all the time or well different tools rather than you know new to you but uh, perhaps so what you can do like if you had to switch jugs or something you can just shut the valve off on it go get a different jug and, and transfer it that way but that's basically the concept behind this Sleepiness. What if we could take a nap in the middle of the day? That'd be awesome. About noon, from like noon to four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I work till five and then adios. Oh, <laughs> I see so. the plan. Yeah, alright. Say goodbye, Trinity. Say goodbye to the people, man. Huh? Nothing? She's tired. She's not saying goodbye. Yeah, it looks like our pressure is equalized. That's all she's gonna take. Yeah, looks up. Right. Yeah, so today just take your equipment off. Should be good to go. Take a little bit we had extra. control you hear it how it just clicks even though we've got full you know headlights and all that business these things when they get down below a, you know a certain voltage the PCM shuts them down they won't crank okay we're hooked up see if the old pocket rocket will get her running Put a link. quick and easy job right man I tell you these ones that get dropped off they're never easy very rarely are they quick uh, I thought it was gonna be that's why I brought you along but uh, the good news is every time we turn on the camera things get interesting and uh, <laughs> it's exactly what it did I didn't expect to find the sludge if you could call it that or dirt mud crust whatever it is uh, but I think we did the best we could as far as flushing out with the time that we had uh, car's got 214,000 miles on it and still runs pretty well. I think it's lacked a little bit in the service department, but I guess that's neither here nor there. It's not a regular customer of mine. It's just a 
a breakdown, but we got it all fixed up, put back together. So hopefully you learned a little something. We're bleeding. You got to learn that I broke Vanessa's tail light. I went out and fixed it. So she's happy. Everybody's happy. So anyhow, viewers, hope you guys are happy. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Check us out on Facebook and Google Plus if you haven't already. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.